All right, good morning, everyone. Here, um, it's Wednesday, oh, April 1st already. Um, I'm never a April Fool's type person because I'm not that, um, what's the word? I don't know. Anyways, uh, today is Wednesday, April 1st, 2020. This is uh, a Pastor Jung, uh, Faith Moore Park in uh, sunny Southern California, as you see. Uh, it seems like it's always sunny here. Um, literally probably 90% of the time, uh, but it's good to be here with you guys yet again on this, on this Wednesday. Now, uh, quick announcements here. I know, uh, I encourage you to follow, follow along on our Wednesday night service for our last midweek. Uh, Pastor Koch uh, will be here, uh, to preach, um, for the online service. So, uh, be, be, uh, ready for that at seven o'clock tonight. Um, other news update, updates, oops, sorry, updates, um, our, our fellowship, uh, cabinetry is already in, which is great as well, uh, to see how, uh, how it looks. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing. So, uh, thank you to everyone who helped out with that. I know Dave, along with the whole committee, I know you did a great job with that. So thank you on that. Uh, but other than that, you know, I've been making calls, uh, all is well, you know, everyone's doing good. Uh, just pray for one another, uh, look after one another and, um, care for your families, uh, uh, continue to look after the people of your church, uh, uh, continued prayers, um, for those who are in need as well in our community, um, and also continued prayers for, um, everyone who is uh, working at the hospital, EMT, first responders, uh, retail workers, I think they're really at the front lines of things right now. So a deathly prayer for their safety this day. But why don't we continue or begin uh, with, with these words uh, from the Catechism based on the sixth petition, Lead Us Not Into Temptation. Let us pray. God, you tempt no one to sin, so we pray that you would guard and keep us so that the devil, the world, and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief, despair, and other great shame and vice. Although we are attacked by these things, we pray that, trusting in you alone, we may finally overcome them and win the victory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Yes, uh, this is a wonderful Word Wednesday. Like that alliteration? Yeah, that's right. And today, um, our Greek word for today, I know this is not a uh, Greek class, but it's a perazzo or a, a perasmus, and, and that's uh, to tempt, right? Uh, perasmus, uh, perazmo is to tempt and that is what we're facing today um in our sixth petition when we pray the sixth petition lead us not into temptation what does this mean it means god tempts no one we pray in this petition that god would guard and keep us so that the devil the world and our sinful nature may not deceive us or mislead us into false belief despair and other great shame and vice although we are attacked by these things we pray that we may finally overcome them and win the victory okay so, so again, uh, when we talk about praying the petitions, uh, this is one that is, uh, I think, of a constant battle in our lives as we face temptation. Now, temptation is literally uh, uh, that tempting or testing, uh, but in this case, I, I think it's more of tempting in a sense where uh, what is what is the great temptation? Now, we look at Jesus in the wilderness, right? We know the story of the wilderness. After being baptized, the Holy Spirit, what happened through him or cast him into the wilderness with the devil, and there the devil tried to tempt him. Now, tempting is not sinful in itself. Falling to temptation is sin. But tempting is the act of attempting to turn, turn us away from God. And that is what the devil tried to do, right? The devil tried to turn Jesus away from God. And what did Jesus do? Well, he, he used the word of God, and at the end of the day, he said, afuera, right? He said, uh, be gone, Satan. 
Well, afuera means outside. But I guess that's the only Spanish word I know for for be gone. Like, go outside, right? Uh, afuera. And uh, this is uh, what uh, the devil does I I I with Jesus, is that Jesus does not fall to temptation. Yes, Jesus is tempted. But he does, he does not fall because he is who? He is the Christ. He is the one who not only has come, as it says in the Bible, to destroy the devil's work, but he comes to crush the devil's head by his work on the cross as the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Now, for us, I mean, you know, we, we always know that quote, uh, we're there in the church, the devil is building a little chapel next door. And... Um, for us, uh, I think as Christians, um, you know, his, this is his main ploy. Uh, it is for us to turn away from the first commandment, that you shall have no other gods. To turn away from the one true God and to, to trust in uh, the, the greatest, uh, what, uh, the, the greatest uh, weaknesses uh, of the flesh uh, as the devil continues to attack us and continues to tempt us, right? Um, and this is what the devil's job is to do. I mean, do you see that in your life? I think temptation is it's constantly there, especially during this uh, COVID-19 crisis, is uh, how easily we can be tempted to focus everything on, on the refuges of the the refuge of the world and the fortresses that the world is trying to promote to us um, and how easy it is to put everything into that basket, right? Um, how tempting it is to turn to our flesh and, and think that, you know, we, we um, are all alone in this. Um, and that temptation, again, is constant. And we know that because, well, ever since the fall in Genesis chapter 3, uh, we very well know that the devil tempted. Our first parents fell, Adam and Eve, Right. And, and there they, uh, their sin came into the world. Um, and likewise, uh, as the devil tempted uh, Adam and Eve, uh, he tempted them with the first commandment, even though the first commandment wasn't there yet. He, he tempted with them, you shall be like God. You'll be better than God. You'll be above God. You'll, know light. You'll, you'll be like God and you will not die. He was twisting God's word. Right? This is, the devil works in so many different ways. Whether it's twisting God's words or, or turning the idol that is of yourself as the main focus. I think the, the temptations and the angles to which he works is, is every which way. I mean, I think every single moment um, we, we continue, we continually be tempted with even our members, with our eyes, our bodies, um, our hands, our feet. I mean, I think everything is a great temptation in, in all that we do. So... When we pray this petition, lead us not into temptation, what, quickly, uh, what we quickly acknowledge is that uh, how we are or what we are up against, right? That it is the devil, the world, and sinful nature, right? Um, you know, the, the, the flesh, our sinful nature wants to be, desires to be number one. We, we look at all the commandments. I mean, covetousness, greed, uh, care for oneself rather than others, right? Uh, loving ourselves more than God. I mean, constantly the flesh is 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 like uh, is is loving all these things of uh, speaking uh, gossip, right? Uh, false testimony against neighbor. I don't know how many times we use our lips as we cast on others when, in fact, our pride at the same time is lifted up. I mean, our flesh is is, is constantly um, uh, falling to these very things. The world. Again, uh, the world is there to tell you, turn away from God, uh, turn away from his word. Uh, you are number one in your life. And of course, the devil, what does he do? He leads us um, away from God and his word, right? Um, I think uh, when we look at scripture, uh, we see right here, um, James 1, 13 to 14. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Right? This is what we are facing. The desire that turns away from God. And that is our sinful nature, my friends. Uh, this is the...
natural birth that we were born into, into sin. And, and that's why Jesus says to his disciples in Mark 14, verse 38, he says, watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. Um, the spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, I've, I've brought this up in past sermons, uh, but it is the truth that we are up against something that is more of merely surface level. That the devil is there in the spiritual realities um, trying to turn us away from God and his word. Do you see that? I mean, I can't tell you how many times uh, we can come to church on Sunday morning and um, have other thoughts on our mind. Even as a pastor, you know, we have a lot of thoughts on our mind and it's easy to, it's easy to forget <laughs> uh, why we are there. I, I think as, as people who are sitting in the pews, uh, there might be a lot of things on your mind. Again, the, the, the devil is trying to distract you from God's word. Uh, the devil always tries to distract me from my vocation as a pastor. Right? It's a constant in all of our lives and in all the vocations that we have too, as parents, as children, as, as workers, um, as spouses, uh, whatever it may be, uh, constantly the devil is trying to turn us away from what God has called us to do. So there's a lot of ways in which uh, we are tempted. And this petition really puts on the, the forefront what we're really dealing with. Because trust me, I mean, do we always uh, remember or are we aware of what we're really dealing with in our sinful flesh? You know, do we really see that? And I want you to rem I want you to really acknowledge and and dwell upon this reality because I think when we are so busy in this world, right? So busy, busy, busy. Um, I think quickly we forget what we're really dealing with in our own in our own soul, right? Um, and and this is what the Bible tells us about what we're dealing with. First uh, Peter five. Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him, firm in your faith, knowing that the same kind of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. There is suffering as a Christian, and that is okay, right? This is all part of the life of a Christian, and that is of suffering. The, the attacks of the devil are real. And there we are aware of this sober-mindedness, right? We're not drunken in a sense of the, uh, 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 of the cares of this life, right? We're, we're not a tossed to and fro by the idols that we have in our life, but we are actually sober-minded in this faith on his word that points us to Christ. And there in our suffering, we, we go to the suffering of Christ on the cross. Um, because we very well know Galatians 5.17 reads about the flesh, for the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. So we see the fallenness of our sin. See, the thing is, my friends, we need the Lord's help. That's why we pray this petition. Lead us not into temptation, right? We, we are aware that we need God's help um, to guide us and guard us from these things. Um, that he may give us the, 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 the faith and the strength to win and overcome them. Right? So this is, uh, I think, a, a very good <clears throat> prayer, a, a petition in itself, uh, to dwell upon um, as we uh, continue in our walk in this faith. Now again, um, as we look at the Bible again, we go from uh, Genesis 3, from Adam and Eve in the garden, the great temptation that they had, they fell. Uh, we see the devil tempting Judas, and this is uh, straight out of your catechism if you have it, um, these biblical references. Um, uh, we, go, we go to his, also Judas's despair, of course, uh, but also Peter denying Jesus as a savior um, um, as he is faced with his enemies, right? Denying Jesus three times. Um, and, and we see the reality of our flesh, you guys. I mean, do you see that? And I think for us, it greatly humbles us to know that we need the Lord's strength. We need the Lord's word. We cannot fight this battle ourselves. And um, when we talk about lead us not into temptation, we very well know that uh, we pray that the Holy Spirit may guide us in his truth, that he may give us, as it says in Ephesians 6, the full armor of God. 
right? To put on the full armor of God. And you know, when we put on things, that's garmenting language. And when we talk about garmenting language, we are talking about baptism. And God has armored you with the water and word of holy baptism. He has given you the strength to meet the days ahead. And he gives you the faith uh, to walk and, and trust in his word. You know, when you're faced with temptation, boom, go to this petition straight. Pray, open your catechism, read uh, uh, this uh, petition, pray upon it as we prayed at the beginning, and uh, really uh, pray that the Lord may give you the strength to overcome and win the victories over the enemies that is against you, and that is the devil, the world, and your sinful nature. Right, friends, this is what we're up against. Do you see that? Right, I think a lot of times it's, Oh, I'm just, you know, I'm troubled by these things or I, I worry too much or, or um, you know, I'm incredibly frustrated or discouraged or just upset about all these things, right? Um, on the surface level, it might seem that way, but deep down, spiritually, there's a dipper, different battle going on, right? I know for myself, honestly, uh, there are times where I get very, uh, uh, can get very frustrated uh, with certain things or, or, or discouraged, um, and it's easy to kind of just stew on top. But when you look below, you ask the question, Lord, what is really happening here? And there we go to lead us not into temptation. We repent and, and, and there we seek the Lord's guidance. We seek the Lord's strength um, as we meet uh, what we are really dealing with, with the word of God. Right? Um, and um, I, I, <laughs> I think when we go through the first uh, when we go through all the commandments, uh, we very well know how quickly uh, we have fallen short um, and how quickly we have fallen to that temptation and we fell into sin and and how easy it is for us um, um, to, to realize uh, that we need to pray. And this prayer is here for you, right? So, so in conclusion today, um, you know, as we look at this, you guys, uh, remember... Um, to pray, pray, and pray. It's a habit, you guys. It, it's a repetition. It's a pattern, right? Um, patterns are very important in life. And when God says, watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation, speaking to the disciples at Gethsemane, he is literally saying, watch and pray, lest you fall into temptation, right? To watch and pray. Keep your eyes open spiritually. Uh, in that spiritual eye open, pray. This is your gift, your privilege to pray to the Lord, to guard and protect you from all things, to give you the strength to meet the days ahead um, in, the, in the temptations that are before you. And, and this is what we ought to pray as we continue to live out our faith because God is with us. He hears our prayers and there uh, he answers us and gives us uh, the strength to meet the trials um, uh, with, with um, his faith, with steadfastness, uh, with, with, with strength, with his word, um, and, and there we go on. I think um, as we conclude today, I don't, don't want to be, uh, uh, I don't want to make this any longer, but I, I think uh, now is a time of great testing as well, right? Tempting and testing, yes, God tests us too. I think now is a time, I think I read an article from my brother pastor this morning about how uh, this COVID virus has really tested us to see our true colors, right? And it, had, and has it tested you? Do you see how this has brought out our true colors in so many different ways? I think humbly speaking, I think during this crisis, I think it, it has brought us to repentance. It, it, it shows us quickly our true colors and how quickly we can press the panic button and jump ship and, and thinking that we're all alone in this. I think this is a great testing for all of us as we look at this petition to dwell upon what is good, who is God, and what he has done for us. Because at the end of the day, all is well, you guys, right? It is well, right? We sing that song, it is well, it is well with my soul. And it, it is because uh, God is our father. He is our savior, uh, the one who brought us to faith, the one who comforts us in this gospel. And there we are led by his very word. So use this time in your isolation, in our self-quarantining, um, the time to dwell upon God's word 
and the glory that he gives by his word, because there we find our faith, and that is Jesus. Through all things, Jesus suffered, he died, he rose, he ascends, and he promises to return to take us home. And that is our promise as we face the days ahead, as we are led by his promises. So remember that this day, friends. Uh, thank you for joining me this day. God's blessings to you. And uh, may his word dwell within you richly. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, uh, we pray that you may not lead us into temptation. Lord, we know that uh, too many times we, we turn away from you, O Lord. Uh, too many times in our flesh, the world, the, the power of the devil, continue to have their onslaught on us. Lord, grant us faith to see what is true. Grant us wisdom uh, to see the spiritual battles that are before us. Lord, guide us this day um, and guard us and grant us your wisdom to meet the day ahead in the one true faith. Lord, though the devil may attack, we know that you are our Savior who crushed the devil's work, who crushed his head on the cross, and who gives us life in your name. Give us this courage in the midst of suffering. Grant us this faith um, in the midst of affliction to know full well uh, that you lead us um, through all things. Lord, for all these things, we are thankful. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you this day, and um, may he continue to give you his peace. Have a great day. Goodbye.